In 68, you think Sergio was still better than Arnold, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Sergio was still harder. Yeah. Uh, you know, they talk about genetics in bodybuilding, John. You always hear this thing about you have to have good genetics to get to the elite level. Right. And, you know, if you look at pure genetics, I think that Sergio was more genetically gifted than Arnold. Yeah. I mean, and there's a number of reasons because, for one thing, I mean, I'm good friends with Sergio Lima Jr. He's told me a lot of things about his father and all that. And there's already things I knew. Sergio basically was a kind of on-the-cuff guy. I mean, he didn't diet. He, he did everything wrong. I mean, he did all these short movements. Yeah. He over you know, I mean, he did everything wrong. Yet he built that physique, that tiny, tiny waist. I remember when I saw him in person the first time, I couldn't believe how his, his waist to shoulder taper. Yeah. You got to see him in person to believe it. Even in the photos, it doesn't really display what he showed. His waist looked tiny. Yeah. So when you saw Sergio in, in 66, when uh, yeah. he was competing in, against Larry Scott, he was much better in 68, right? He was much bigger. Much, much better. Much better. Yeah. Uh, he, he was bigger. He was like, what, like 30, 40, well, not 40, but it looked like he was about 20, 30% bigger. Yeah. And he was also much harder. Yeah. You know, because uh, when he competed against Scott, uh, he was um, more or less kind of fresh off being an Olympic weightlifter. You know, he had only had, what, maybe, what, two years of bodybuilding, of uh, straight bodybuilding training at the time. Yeah. So he was nowhere near his potential. Which started to come out like like you say around you know maybe sixty eight sixty nine that's when he really and he peaked I believe in seventy two that's when you had the yeah. the greatest the greatest Sergio of all right uh, and you know the funny thing is I and I told this to Sergio Oliva Jr. when I first met him I didn't like Sergio Oliva because I, I I tried to talk to him on a number of occasions and he was always very nasty to me you know he was uh, you know I, I I don't think it was a personal thing I, but he knew that I worked for Joe Weider. And he didn't like Joe Weider, so yeah. he kind of took down on me. And, you know, in retrospect, you know, today I wouldn't take it as personal as I did back then. But but I, I, I told, you know, and, uh, you know, I mean, but I still give the guy credit. I, as I told Sergio Jr., I said, you know, I, I didn't have a good opinion of your father because I met him three times and all three times were bad. But I said, you know, as far as a bodybuilder, he is without question in the, one of the most genetically greatest bodybuilders of all time. There's no question about it. Yeah. You know, so, so, uh, and Sergio Jr. said, yeah, he could be a real bastard. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I told the, uh, I told Sergio Jr. It's a funny story. I told Sergio Jr. the, uh, the time that I first met Sergio, which was at that Mr. Olympia. I, I came up to him backstage at the Brooklyn Academy of Music and I asked him for an autograph. I was a teen, I was a kid. I was what I forget, sixteen years old, something like that. And I asked him for an autograph. And and, he, and uh, I remember he was wearing this bloody butcher's robe and blood all over it. Right. <laughs> he was pumping up, you know. And I and uh, I I said um, I called him Mr. Oliva. I said, Mr. Oliva, can I have an autograph? I had this little pad, you know, with a pen. Yeah. And he says he looked at me and he says, Get the fuck out of my face. <laughs> And, you know, I was a Brooklyn kid, kind of a, you know, you, you, when you go in Brooklyn, you're ready to get in a fight in two seconds. Right, right. 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 So, so I looked at him, and, I, and I, I was about to respond. I was going to, you know, in kind, but I looked at this guy. I looked at the, all the blood on the rope. I looked at his face, and we had, like, he had scars on his face, and he just looked like a really rough guy. He had hair back then, you know. Yeah, yeah. I said, nah, nah, I'm not going to say anything. <laughs> I just turned and walked away, and I told that story to Sergio Jr., so now we have a kind of standing joke. Every time I come into Gold's gym, if Sergio Jr. is there, like at the other end of the gym, he'll yell at he, he, he uh, he'll yell across the gym. I mean, hey Jerry, I said what, Sergio? He said, get the fuck out of my face. <laughs> 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 funny yeah, that's you know, great. Honestly, I mean, I know you probably have spoken to Sergio, John, and yeah. you know, a lot of people have told me that you know, he, he, you know, if you get him at the right time. He was a good person. He wasn't a bad guy. Right. So, you know, I, I'm not holding a grudge after all these years. I Again, I think it was more a case of me have, being associated with Joe Weider. Yeah, when I held that against him. you. And, you know, he just didn't like Joe, yeah. you know, for a number of reasons. And, and uh, he took it out of me. So I'm not going to take it personal. I have nothing against him. I'm sorry he died, you know. And, again, to me, far and away, Maybe even the most genetically gifted bodybuilder of all time was Sergio, right. and I say that because he didn't do anything right, and he still looked like that. Yeah, 
I said to Sergio Junior, I said, you know, if most people use your father's nutritional training practices, they would have no physique at all. And look at look at him. Right. Look at what he did. I know. The guy's a phenomenon. He was just a genetic freak. Yeah, it is. It's amazing. It's amazing. Yeah. Bodybuilding Heroes and Legends Volume 1 by John Hansen is the book that celebrates the golden age of bodybuilding. This was the era in which legends such as Arnold Schwarzenegger, Sergio Oliva, Frank Zane, Robbie Robinson, Cal Skalak, and Mike Menser battled it out on stage for the biggest titles in bodybuilding. Read about some of the most exciting competitions that took place in the 1970s, including the Oliva-Schwarzenegger battles, Zane's first Olympia victory, and Scalac's controversial Mr. Olympia appearance, and much more. Filled with inspiring images of some of the greatest bodybuilders in the history of the sport, Bodybuilding Heroes and Legends Volume 1 is now available on Amazon.com or email John directly at naturalolympia at gmail.com.